Ladies and gentlemen, welcome inside the Turning Stone Resort Casino, New York, New York's most award-winning resort and gaming destination. This is boxing. This is Top Rank, presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter, Mr. Bob Arum, in association with Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing, sanctioned by the Oneida Indian Nation Athletic Commission, Executive Director, Daniel De Gustafson, Commissioner Derek Montroy, our physicians at ringside, Dr. Sela Newton, Dr. Imtiaz Samad, and Dr. Afrona A. Reed. Your timekeeper tonight, Bob Kaiko. The judges at ringside, Glenn Feldman, Tom Shrek, and Don Trella. And the man in charge at the sound of the bell, Mr. Mark Nelson. Now to everyone in attendance, and to all watching on ESPN, this is boxing. This is top rank, and oh, baby, this is the main event. 12 rounds for the WBO Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 173 and a half pounds, wearing red, white, and blue trunks. He brings a record of 18 victories with only two defeats. 12 of those victories coming by way of knockout, making his first attempt at a world title from Delray Beach, Florida, Steve Jeffro. Introducing out of the red corner. He weighed in at 174 and a quarter pounds, wearing black with gold trim. He brings a record of 27 victories, three defeats, 21 of those victories coming by way of knockout, making his first world title defense. He is the reigning WBO light heavyweight champion of the world from Long the Beast from the East, Joe Smith Jr. Let's go, have him ready, take that off. Gentlemen, you received my instructions in the dressing room. You both know exactly what I expect. A good, clean fight. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck to both of you. Steve Jafrod was preparing to fight Gonzalo Andrezan in an eight-round fight January 8th. And here he is stepping in to fight for the world title against Joe Smith Back Jr., who prepared for three opponents. First. It was Umar Salamov, October 2020. That went down due to COVID. Then it was Callum Johnson for this same date. Now it's Steve Giffard and Smith doing what he told us he would do. Trying to remind Giffard that this is not a sparring session. This fight is real. You know what I have people calling me and texting me and saying, oh, have you ever had a last minute replacement? I said, no. I said, but I'm not really worried about this fight for Joe Smith Jr. because he fights the same way every time. Full steam ahead, high offense, power shot, as you see here. And Jafar being sneaky with that quick left hook counter. See, the biggest issue that Jafar has is he becomes an instant punching bag with the high guard usage. Too much high guard usage allowing Joe Smith Jr to hit him, to touch him, to drain him with those big, heavy shots. The corner of Jafar asking for that jab, and he triples it up. He said, the key is going to be the jab, because Joe Smith doesn't move his head. It's my job to move it with my jab. Watch your heads, guys. <laughs> That's funny. The key is the jab. No, the key against a puncher and a guy that likes to be heavy on the front foot is movement. That's what it is, is using your footwork. That's the key. 
Shafar pretty flat-footed here in the early going. He was preparing for an eight-round fight, and then they said, you're going 12, so he may think, I need to reserve some of that gas tank for later on in the fight. He compared it to being a marathon runner where you're hitting the wall in those final miles and you just have to dig deep. Can he do it? We just saw Smith do it in winning the title against Maxime Vlasov his last time in the ring. See, I like what Jafar is doing now. Now he's just not standing in one place. He's taking subtle steps left into the right and using his jab and catching Smith as he tries to get close. That left hook once again. It's sneaky and it's quick from Jafar. Look at Joe now. Look like he's trying to box a little bit, getting up on his toes a bit, using his jab. Now he's pushing forward. But one place he's not going is the body. And that's what you want to do against a guy that has a high guard. You want to touch him down to the body, bang on those elbows, bang on those shoulders, weaken those, and bring those hands down. He's trying to go around the guard as Shafrado drops that left hand and gets clipped by a right from Joe Smith Jr., who lands another left hook as well. Get your hands free. And Smith told us, after that loss in the world title fight against Dimitri Bivol, I learned that I can't just outpunch people. I need to finesse a little bit and box. Good start for Steve Jaffrard here in his first world title opportunity in his 21st professional fight. Last minute replacement against Joe Smith Jr. who comes out firing, trying to set up shots. But not getting beyond that high guard of Jafrard and all that your hands free, guys. shoe shining, and he gets clipped with the uppercut. <laughs> I was like wondering, what is he doing? You know, one of the tactics you can use against the high guard is is the peel. You know, Lomachenko uses it all the time. You knock the hand down, you pull the hand down with the opposite hand, with the lead hand, pull it down, and then come around with a right cross. Yeah, but you, you got the same be, thing on the right side. You got to be super quick to do that, Tim. And speed is not the hallmark of Joe Smith Jr. Oh, you don't have to be super quick to do it. You just got to have the proper technique to do it. That's it. You just got to work on it, practice it. Yeah, you ain't got to be quick to do it. Looking to change angles was Joe Smith Jr. But Jafar getting behind those earmuffs. And there goes that digging right hook to the body from Joe Smith Jr. Ultimately, Tim, Jafar's gonna have to throw punches if he's going to beat Joe Smith Jr. He is, I mean, he's trying to land the cleaner shots right now. As you can see, he's coming forward now, getting the champion against the ropes. Not landing too much of anything, but it's how it looks sometimes. You got the challenger have the champion against the ropes. Body language is something that the referee, the referee as well as the judges read. I can tell you this, that tight guard that Jafar has, <laughs> it's tough to break through, honestly. You know, Joe Smith Jr., he has sludge hammers for his offense. Those hands are heavy, and he's having a hard time penetrating that defense, that high guard defense. A guard that Winky Wright was very successful with. And Jafar has a 78 inch reach, so it allows him to protect the head and the body simultaneously. And he's using that well against Joe Smith Jr. here in the early going. Oh, look at Joe Smith Jr. showing a little wrinkle. He's dancing on his toes, going left and right. Okay. Threw an uppercut from too far right there, and Jafar didn't make him pay. Those are opportunities where Jafar has to make the champion pay. When he missed wildly like that, you have to be close enough to make him pay. Good jab. Round two coming to an end here at the Turning Stone Resort and Casino on Top Rank Boxing on ESPN. And Steve Jeffrard is not the first late last minute replacement to come in and try to win a world title. There's been some successful ones at heavyweight. We had Andy Ruiz recently defeat Anthony Joshua. 
Corey Sanders defeated Vladimir Klitschko in 2003. What about Manny Pacquiao? The legend began in June of 2001 when he beat Lelo Lidwaba at junior featherweight. Then there was Chris Bird defeating Vitaly Klitschko. So the Klitschkos are on this list twice. There's no Klitschko in the ring tonight. That was in 2000. And I mentioned the time that Isidro Chino Garcia was able to come out of the stands and win the light flyweight title against Jose Carita Lopez at Fantasy Springs Casino. Looking good. He don't want to be in the center of the ring. You heard Kevin Cunningham telling his charge, Steve Giffard, you're looking good, and he doesn't want to be in the center of the ring. Round three of a scheduled 12-round world title fight between WBO light heavyweight champion Joe Smith Jr., who's thrown 62 more punches and landed 26 more punches through the first two rounds of his first world title defense against Steve Giffard. There's that stick. Yep, beautiful stick right there from Jafar. You know, Joe Smith Jr., he's known for his volume, you know, determination, his extreme conditioning. And what he's doing now, he's trying to box with the boxer. You cannot do that. You need to step on the gas and be who you are. That's what got you in the place that you're in right now, a champion. The body shot there from Joe Smith Jr., partially blocked by the elbows of Jafar, and that's also a dangerous proposition because you could hurt your hand on the elbow, but mm. not when you land clean on the chin like Joe Smith just did on Jafar. There's a big right hand once again, and now Smith Jr. finding a home for his moneymaker. You come around the guard, you come underneath the guard, when you have a high guard, a, high, a fighter that has a high guard usage. Body shots are there, doubled up with the triple left hooks, doubles with the left hooks. Kevin Cunningham's happy with the way Jafar is fighting. This, this is the storm I've been talking about, telling the weather, but I want him to stay in the center of the ring. I don't want him to be near those ropes. It's also interesting that Kevin Cunningham said, if the fight goes beyond seven rounds and Joe Smith is in trouble, Jafar has never been past eight rounds as a professional. He was preparing for an eight round fight. So it'll be interesting to see if it does get past that eight round mark, exactly what Kevin Cunningham saw that Jafar had for Smith who lands another right hand there. Nice right hand from Jafrard. When he throws those punches and he lets his hands go, he gives himself a chance, but Jafrard is just a little bit too conservative, and it may just be the power of Joe Smith Jr. Well, Joe Smith Jr. is choosing the box right now. And in spots, he's outboxing Jafrard. Until Jafrard lets his hands go. You see that sneaky left counter from Jafrard. Yeah, but his back is against the ropes. He's squared up against the ropes. That's a bad position to be in. Absolutely, because the judges also see that it's Joe Smith Jr. who is the aggressor. Yes. Kevin Cunningham was in the ear of Steve Jafrard, proud of how he's boxing early in this fight. But he said, I need you to get off first, and I need you to use some feints. So we'll see how Jafrard does here in round four of a scheduled 12-round world title fight from Verona, New York. Good quick start from Jafrard. Yeah, he came out busy with the jab. You know, the subtle movement, that's what he has to do. He has to change ranges with Smith. Smith has a hard time trying to maintain and manage distance. You, you get out on him and you come in, and you keep changing the distance off and on, it confuses him. Jerry Capabianco says that Everything for Smith starts with the jab. It has to be precise. He goes, it's hard, you know, when he when he locks up in that shell in that shell high guard. But he goes, that's when we got to go to the body. And you saw Joe Smith go to the body at the beginning of the round. But then he once again abandoned it. 
they both I like how the, the, the jab is gonna be key tonight Tim but go ahead yeah I'll just like how when Jafar when he stays in the center of the ring he dominates with his jab and quick combinations now he's coming forward looking to push back the champion the champion looking to box unbelievable I, I, I'm trying to understand the game plan it's of Joe Smith Jr. Yeah, it's interesting because he was coming off of a, a title win where he was not satisfied with how he looked against Maxime Vlasov with the exception of those closing three rounds that won him the fight. And in a, in a way, it's not an impressive performance from Joe Smith Jr. against a guy who we knew if he moved could give him trouble. Oh, yeah. I mean, Bivol is a perfect example. Has some really good feet, probably the best feet in this division. Beat Joe Smith Jr. Here it's about the gas tank. It's about Jafar being able to stay at this pace, remain at this level of intensity throughout the fight. Because we've seen Joe Smith Jr. close the show late. Mm. And here he comes with that onslaught. Some of those shots get around clean. A lot of them end up catching the glove partially, but Jafar taking those shots so far. And then he gets clipped to the body with the right hook. You can't. Uh, that's Joe Smith Jr. And, and, and Tim, Shafard can't do so well hands. for the first two and a half minutes and then let Smith take the rest of it. Well, what happens is, is that Shafard, he has to just be on defense. Those show shots are heavy. They're hard. There's another mm. big right hand from Joe Smith. At yep, here's some high guard offense right here from Joe Smith Jr., the champion. Coming around the guard, as you can see, around the elbow. That's how you get in position when you have someone that uses the high guard. Nice little belt line shot right there from him. Again, going down to the belt line, but then that right hand goes right around that lead hand of Jafar. Beautiful work right there on the inside. That's exactly the punches that you need to use. He also can come up top and come around the guard and underneath the guard if he chooses so. So Joe Smith Jr. asserted himself as an offensive machine late in that fourth round after a great start from Steve Giffard. We have to keep in mind that Giffard took this fight on eight days notice and how do you soften up a guy who's never been eight rounds and was preparing for an eight round fight? You go to the body. Look at Jafar now. Jafar now taking his attention downstairs on Joe Smith Jr. Nice mm. shot downstairs from Joe Smith Jr. Was a nice little slip in the inside. Nice change-up shot right there. Slip left. Dig with the body shot. Another setup right there. Beautiful job by Joe Smith Jr. See, and those are the times where, where Jafar needs to counter. You know, he needs to counter more often, as you alluded to earlier, Bernardo. Yeah, that left is sneaky, the left is quick, and it's very effective against Joe Smith Jr. But there's a feeling that if he throws it, he's going to have something coming back like he did there, but very effective four-punch combination from Giffard. And it is, finally, that left counter from Giffard. Yeah, that's a catch and shoot. You know, that's that's what the high guard usage is for. You want guys to punch at you to wear themselves out. But let me tell you, Joe Smith Jr., he's a machine. He's a juggernaut. He doesn't get tired. Oh, that was a low blow there from that Joe Smith. Low. Another one with the yeah. left. Here comes the warning from Mark Nelson, the referee in this fight. There's that double jab with a looping left hook around the guard of Steve Giffard. And there's a straight right that does some damage. And here comes Joe Smith Jr. The body language of to get through. Yeah. 
A heavy-handed Joe Smith Jr. going to work here on Steve Jafar with 20 seconds left in the fifth round. Steve Nelson asks him if he's good. Doesn't look that way, but Joe Smith Jr. only has 10 seconds left here in round number five. Not enough time. Referee Mark Nelson came over to Steve Jafar and said, show me something, because in that last round, Tim, it was a right hand that Joe Smith showed Jafar that did some damage. Yep, he manipulated the guard right there. You see the little knock right there, boom. Straight down the middle, the left hook. That's what occupied Jafar. Took his eye up off the right hand. And the champion was able to throw, come right between the guard of Jafar with his right hand. 69% of his power punches were landed in the last round, 31 of 45. And that is not where you want to be percentage-wise against Joe Smith Jr. Any fight One mistake really. that, <laughs> look, just put it this way, one mistake that Joe Smith Jr. is making is that when J Jafar, when he counters, when he lets his hands go, he needs to punch with him. That's when he opens up. If he punches with him, him he'll up, be man. able to catch him cleanly instead of have to defend and go around that, that high fair. guard. Kevin Cunningham is a world-class trainer. He's been training Steve Jafar for two guys. years now, since 2019 in the middle of the pandemic. And you see that left uppercut from Joe Smith. Then he turns it into a left hook to the liver. And those are the shots that are going to do damage against a boxer mover like Steve Giffard. There it is. You see Joe trying to attempt to, to pull the guard down. Giffard hit him with the right hand. He stuck his hand out there in the left hand, trying to pull the lead hand down to come with his right hand. And Jafar has a decision to make. Is he going to allow Joe Smith Jr. to continue to tee off on him? Or is he going to use his own quickness, quick hands and legs to make him work at it? Yeah, Jafar can box. I mean, he has great amateur pedigree. He can box. He knows how to box. But he has to make that choice. You hear the Joe Smith chant inside the Turning Stone Resort and Casino. No doubt that the common man has brought out the crowd to cheer him on in his first world title defense. And Jafrard, well, he's trying to figure out Come as on. a low blow lands for Joe Smith Jr. That downstairs. Keep him up. That's another low blow. Goes downstairs. You good? Give me a second here. Up to five minutes for Steve Jafrard. To recover from that shot, and here it is, Tim. Set. Attempt with the left hook down to the body. All right, let's go. Time in, here we go. Just threw a little bit too too far away <laughs> in a bad location. Back. Right on the right on the cup. We're halfway through this world title fight. Joe Smith Jr. making the first defense of his WBO light heavyweight world title. I'm Bernardo Osuna alongside former world champion Timothy Bradley and stellar boxing scribe and reporter Mark Frigo coming to you from the Turning Stone Resort and Casino. And you see that 34% of the total punches that Joe Smith Jr. has thrown have found a home on Steve Giffard, who's thrown less than him and landed half of his shots compared to Smith. Yeah, Jafar, I mean, I didn't like his body language in the last round. It just seems like he's, he's checking out already. You know, he can be in this fight. He just got to believe in himself and let his hands go. You know, God gives you talent, man. I mean, it boils down to you. I mean, what you want to do. You have to create your own destiny. And, you know, right now, it don't seem like he wants to win this fight. You know, Tim, he was at his lowest after he lost his first two professional fights. Shelly Finkel, his manager, was so high on him when he signed him out of the amateurs. He was a standout. He's a local legend in Boca Raton, Florida, for his triple crown achievements in the amateurs in 2010. 
loses his first two fights. He gets dropped by his manager, by his promoter, Golden Boy Promotions. Somehow he ends up winning 18 fights, and tonight he's fighting for a world title. But you got to go get it. Nobody's going to hand it to you, especially not Joe Smith Jr. after all it's taken for him to be a champ. And you got to be ready, Bernardo. You got to be ready no matter what. There's no excuses because you never know when the opportunity like this will come about. So that's why I always tell people, go that extra mile. This won't be three miles a day, go four miles. If you're going to do 10 rounds a day, do 15 rounds in the gym. So that way, you're ready for moments like this and opportunities like this. Do not slip away. Joe Smith Jr.'s co-promoter, Joe DeGuardia, told us, I called 12 contenders for this fight. None of them wanted to take a fight for the world title against Joe Smith Jr. on late notice. Steve Giffard stepped up, but now he's got to show up in the ring. Mm, beautiful right hand right there by Joe Smith Jr., the champion. Champ just walking down the challenger here in round number seven, looking to set up those shots. First mm. a left hook, then a double right uppercut. Now it's a left one. And Jafar with very little answer here in the seventh round. Jafar ready to go. All Joe Smith Jr. got to do is turn it on. Turn it on. Big shot after big shot after big shot. Now it's the time for Smith to turn into that beast from the east and not the boxer we've seen early on. Be careful. Obey the bell here. Time. He begging for you to beat him tonight. Come on, man. What? Hey, hey, we're not talking about no shit like that. Hey, he trying to beat this motherfucker with one hand. He said his left show. There was a discussion between Kevin Cunningham and Steve Giffard in that corner where Giffard told his trainer, my left arm's not right. My left shoulder is hurt. And he said, if you got to beat him with one hand, go out and become a champion tonight. He's begging to be beaten tonight. <laughs> you want to know why that, that shoulder's hurting? Because Joe Smith Jr. hits that hard. He's banging him anywhere, on the shoulders, on the arms. You want to use that high guard? I'm going to bang your shoulders. And everybody always wonder why I beefed up and got, you know, all these muscles on me when I was in, when I was fighting. It's because I wanted to be able to take your punches. And no matter where you hit me, I want you to feel like you're hitting a brick wall. It reminds me of what Canelo Alvarez did to the bicep of Callum Smith when he beat him for the world title. And now... Jafrard trying to get that second wind against Joe Smith Jr., who continues to pound on the fighter whose parents are from Haiti, who grew up in Southern Florida. Said, I didn't know that my lifestyle was poverty. It's just how we all lived, all crammed in one house together. I wouldn't change it, though. There he finally threw a left hand a minute and 20 seconds into this eighth round did Steve Giffard. It's amazing to me how at this moment I see Joe Smith. He's fighting to the level of his competition right now. You know, he's taking his time. You see those little arm punches like that. He's just, just buying his time right now. Taking his time, fighting to the level of his competition, and really not trying to stop Giffard. And he has an opportunity to. If he wants that better BF fight, he better be fighting at another level. Put it into another gear because Joe Smith Jr. is just feared enough where the big names don't want him. He's got to earn that shot by looking impressive so that the fans clamor for him to fight in the unification bout. And you see what that does? That just gives it gives your opponent confidence. That's what Jafar is getting. He's gaining confidence. He's like, oh, okay. You see him let his hands go now. You do not want an opponent to gain confidence by you letting off the gas. There's that sneaky left from Jafrard. Watch your elbow, Joe. And the warning for elbow, Joe. Joe Smith Jr. for using the elbow. 
So he's been warned for low blows. He's been warned for using the elbow. Ooh, he set up that nice right uppercut. uppercut. That was nice. And he was coming in as he was doing it. ESPN is brought to you by GEICO. Save even more when you bundle home and car insurance. Back up. Joe Back Smith up. is bundling body shots with heavy artillery with a right hand against Steve Giffard, who got a talking to from his trainer, Kevin Cunningham, and said, do you want to win a world title? Well, he's never been this far into a fight, and Joe Smith wants to make sure, Tim, that he goes no further. Up. Come on, keep your head up. That's right. I mean, you can't win a fight if you don't fight. <laughs> That's what we've seen with Jafar. You can't win if you don't fight. This is about over right now. Jafar in the corner. He already checked out. Trust me. And he's going down. And he ready may to go. not get up. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, the fight is over. The ten. corner has decided that the fight is over. He probably wouldn't have got up at the count of 10 anyway. But it's a technical knockout victory in the ninth round for Joe Smith Jr., who successfully defends his title for the first time as a professional. That belt goes back to Long Island, New York, with the common man, Joe Smith Jr., who improves to 31, uh, 31 fights with 28 victories, 22 by way of knockout. Tim. It was in the corner that Kevin Cunningham already saw what was going to happen early in round nine, and it was only a matter of seconds until it ended up happening. The onslaught from Joe Smith Jr. Yeah, tracking him down, being who Joe Smith Jr. is. You know, a juggernaut coming forward, just letting his hands go. This is the temp right here. The pepper right there is to get the, the referee to step in and do exactly what he did there. I think the corner stepped in before he actually stepped in and decided to stop the fight. It was but you have Jafar pent up in the corner, not firing any punches back. Just a beautiful finish right there from Joe Smith Jr. Honestly, mentally, I think that mentally, this fight was more challenging for Joe Smith Jr. than an actual fight. You know, this is his fourth time, you know, having these type of problems as far as, you know, opponents catching COVID, he caught COVID, and having last minute replacements. And I know he feels good right now and relieved that he got through this unscathed and with his title back around his waist. It was a 16 punch barrage, but really the only one that landed cleanly was that final left hook that put him down for the finish in the ninth round. Let's send it up to Mark Chinook for the official time. Ladies and gentlemen here inside Turning Stone Resort Casino. This bout comes to a conclusion at 37 seconds of round number nine by way of knockout for your winner and still WBO light heavyweight champion of the world the beast from the east Joe Smith It was by no means an easy title defense for Joe Smith Jr., whose fans and family are extremely happy after he gets his 28th professional win. It's not easy either coming in to a fight, Tim, as the target, as the man who is hunted because you hold the belt, but he was able to do it tonight. Yes, he was. All right, we're going to take 